Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 guide we have all about the newest patch number 6 just released. As always it has brought a lot of changes and improvements but we'll be focusing into the gameplay and mechanics ones of course so let's get started right? For starters you can now dismiss recruited companions from your active party while speaking to the companion you want to replace them with and this is well to put it simply, a huge quality of life change, I'm pretty sure if you've already played the game, you know how annoying it is having to, well, individually dismiss a companion before recruiting another one, because you only have four slots. Now it's bound to be much faster and smoother. Second, whenever a dialogue triggers automatically, the game will now try to prioritize your avatar character as the main speaker. Another nice change, because usually chances are you'll be hoarding the best skills on your main character, Although I still think it's rather disappointing that in a D&D party-based game, the game doesn't let you, well, select the character with the highest skill appropriate automatically whenever doing dialogue checks and all that. As you know, Neverwinter Nights and pretty much all the other D&D games. Also, you can now always switch the difficulty to custom mode unless you're already playing on honor mode, of course. Plus, as a gameplay-related bug fix, the shield bash and also rebuke of the mighty passives will now trigger saving throws. I don't usually bother with shield bash because, well, by the time enemies attack me, they are dead already. Anyways, now for the main gameplay mechanics and changes. You can now toggle off repelling blast as expected, which is great because it was bugged in the latest patch. Even if you turned it off, it would still apply, which is a bit annoying because there are many occasions where you don't want to push enemies away from you. As I'll soon explain in my Honor Mode Warlock Guide. Auto selecting your camp supplies before a long rest will use resources more optimally, okay? I usually just send everything to camp anyways, resources wise, for resting. Group Hide now works on all party members controlled by the player, including followers and summons. This is actually a huge change. If you like playing summoner parties with lots of minions and so on, like I do. Well, it was very annoying before because you had to individually hide and stealth every single one of your summons, no longer. Now it's much faster with just the click of a single button. You can now also recruit hirelings to a full party. They'll hang around the camp until you need them, another great quality of life change just like the ability to switch party members on demand as I mentioned before. The elixir of huge giant strength now applies its effects when thrown, pretty good, as I'm sure they nerfed a lot of the elixirs not to work when throwing, probably because they'll then affect multiple targets instead of just one. But huge giant strength is the easiest of them all to acquire in mass amounts, and is a tremendously powerful buff for any melee build that's focusing on strength, including summons. Creating harmful surfaces beneath NPCs will now trigger a crime reaction, as expected, I suppose. I never understood why you could drop area of effects on top of them and they wouldn't go hostile, like Fog Cloud and Darkness. Scratch can no longer equip certain weapons like the Everburn Blade. I guess I'm naive because I, well, never thought that would even work. My Scratch always attacks with his fangs and claws only. As a quality of life improvement, the packed weapon condition now remains after a long rest. A very welcome addition as well. Usually in all my Warlock Pact of the Blade guides, people often ask why they have low to hit chance. That's because you didn't activate packed weapon before starting battle. Now it will remain even after a long rest, so you don't have to spam it as much. For some combat changes, the Shambling Mound is now a fully fledged honor mode boss. Now have to fight it again, of course. It's a bit annoying that you can't keep honor mode saves before each boss for, well, easy testing whenever something changes, as you only have one save after all. The Drider from the Moonrise Towers in the second act, and also the Drawer Ragsling through Soul Boss from Act 1 at the Goblin Camp, now have new legendary actions in honor mode. For Drawer, his leadership aura now also debuffs enemies, but you can always just stealth him from afar. I'm afraid. While the Drider has a special Sanctuary ability called Spindleweb Sanctuary that erupts in a psychic explosion when the status ends, with a debuff aura as well. I think you can see the Drider doing that. Yeah, right here. 
in one of the patch gifts. The Drider does have pretty high initiative, so chances are he'll act first to pre-buff him with Sanctuary, of course, and trigger this. Improved combat, artificial intelligence, pathfinding through dangerous surfaces, and steep terrain. Well, hopefully they change it for the best, because if you've already played the game, then you know, let's say you have lava surfaces, the AI wasn't smart enough to travel around that, so you just instantly kill your characters during combat, of course. For some more interesting quality of life changes, well, first we have trade interface upgrades. It's just got a graphic overhaul with patch number 6, clarifying which character is bartering for the party, which is pretty important because the higher their persuasion score, the more of a discount you'll get for both buying and selling items, and the discount can actually go to very high amounts. Second, because the whole party's inventory will now be present in the trade interface, you won't have to constantly switch between characters for selling items. We still have some combat and balance changes to go through. Fixed enemy NPCs being able to counterspell a character they are not in combat with, which was very annoying before because he kind of got in the way of your pro buffing. In honor mode, the extra action granted by haste no longer grants an extra attack to the slayer form. So it works just like the other nerfs to action economy in honor mode, something I'll soon be posting in a separate guide. The follow-up to the Mind Flayer Powers Fracture Psych, that's Shatter Psych, is now a bonus action if you have the Awakened Feet, another welcome change, because this power lets you reduce the enemy's AC, something very useful for Tactician and Honor Mode, and you can keep using it on new enemies after the first target dies, that's what Shatter Psych is for. Using a whole action for it is pretty bad, though. For a bonus action, it's much better. Mage Slayer and Portent now work while in Wild Shape and other shape-shifted forms. I'm all about more buffs to, well, Wild Shape and Shape Shifting. Mimics now have increased attack damage. I'll have to test it, but I can't really recall you fighting more than three Mimics in the game, in the Grim Forge area, that is. Counterspelling Legendary Actions that can be counterspelled now removes the Legendary Action condition as well. A pretty powerful change because of how amazing Counterspell is, as an ability anyways. It's just that usually, unless the enemy is triggering their legendary actions in honor mode as a reaction, chances are you'll kill them before they can activate them. And for a fun change, fixed whole person working on nulls, who are certainly not people, poor nulls. As if farming them for haste potions wasn't enough. We also have more gameplay changes, act by act, usually buffing some of the enemies and bosses such as Magma Methods always spawning during the Grim encounter, although you can easily cheese it from afar <laughs> as you never get hit, even if the Forge Hammer wasn't used. The Drawer Ragsling Bugbear boss can now win spiders to his side, although I always just kill him <laughs> without the spiders. Nairs, or Nears, I don't know how to pronounce it, legendary action now correctly triggers when he is attacked rather than when he attacks. Well, I'm pretty sure it was triggering when he was attacked, in my last Honor Mode fights at least, if you cast something like Magic Missile on him, it would automatically trigger his legendary action, which by the way is one of the best ones, because like I said, it's a reaction, so he doesn't have to act to trigger it. Striking an Aether Cap with the infected status will now force the attacker to make a saving throw to avoid infestation rather than the Aether Cap itself. It's kind of funny seeing changes like this, because I swear there's only a single Aether Cap battle in the whole game. Now, this one is interesting for the second act. Increase the difficulty of Catheric boss encounters in Tactician and Honor mode. I still have to fight him again, of course. Although it is interesting because I'm pretty sure you can just use persuasion checks to force him to, well, kill himself, like most Act 2 bosses. The Apostle of Merkel's boss, Finger of Death spell, is now treated as a level 7 spell instead of a cantrip which can of course result in it taking a lot more damage from the Mind Flayer counter spell ability, which is based on the spell level. The Apostle of Merkel's Consume the Faithful and Gaze of the Dead legendary action can now ignore blindness from Magical Darkness, a pretty powerful change because, as I'll soon cover, Warlocks with Devil's Sight plus Magical Darkness, as in the spell itself, can easily trivialize loads and loads of battles in this game. No longer the Apostle of Merkel, because he'll get you bypass that. We also have Act 3, 
upgrades to enemies is just that honestly by this point you are killing everything in one turn before they can react <laughs> if you know what you're doing anyways for a fun change when it comes to Lorwaken, the sorcerer sundries shopkeeper and also boss got a lot of upgrades pretty much all of his summons have been buffed and he starts with four elementals at his side but anyway so long as you kill the elementals before attacking him he's toast remove the steel watcher golems vulnerability to lightning damage from tactician difficulty upwards kind of a big change because lightning was the easiest way of destroying them as they are pretty tanky enemies with i think the highest hit point score for chapter 3 enemies and well there's a lot of other changes not really when it comes to gameplay mechanics, however, it's mostly flavor stuff or some quality of life improvements, and most importantly, performance upgrades, of course. But we've already covered the most important ones. Well, this was it from my BG3 Patch 6 guide. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support. Soon I'll be posting my honor mode guides at last. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.